Lil Brunson back at you with the back at you, and I am the best reporting on the Eagles. Listen, listen. This video is brought to you by Manscape. Use code Brunson, say 20% off, get the free shipping, and the free shipping, I fall for that for y'all. Listen, you know the vibes. There it is. It's set in stone. It's time to it's time to get militant now. It's time to get militant now. You know what I'm saying? It's time to get militant now and, and you know, begin the quest for the second one. A lot of people don't think that we can make no noise. You know what I'm saying? But now that we know who our opponent is, now that we know we facing, you know, Tom Brady be going down there to see the Bucks again. You know what I'm saying? We played them in the season. That's an advantage to ours. You know what I mean? Yeah, this is one of the favorable matchups that I thought we could get. You know, they're a little hobbly. You know what I'm saying? Antonio Brown is out of the picture. Evan seemed to got banged up today. I got we gonna learn more about that during the course of the week. No Godwin. Um, and they really can't stop the run that well. You know what I mean? Their running backs are also banged up. They just signed Le'Veon Bell. And Tom Brady is a statue back there, man. If we put pressure on Tom Brady, this game really, really, really is in our favor, man. It's really in our favor. So I really like our chances against, you know, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It was between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Cardinals, who I wanted to see, you know, the most. And, you know, Tom Brady got to be up at night thinking about us. And I feel comfortable with this game being on the road. You know what I mean? I think it was more into Tom Brady's, you know, advantage that this game, you know, that the regular season game was played in Philly. But I really, it's, this this is one of the most favorable matchups we're going to get. Now, we'll probably be an underdog going against every team in this postseason. Rightfully so. You know what I'm saying? We was the last seed. It is what it is. But we got more than the puncher's chance. I like our chances against Tom Brady. This, this is a game... That I think has to come down to, you know, and we're going to talk about this all week, trust me. But in short, before we move on to the next topic, we did give up 80 yard, 80, 80 percent completion percentage to Tom Brady. We cannot allow that to happen again. Tom Brady absolutely didn't work for anything in that game. Nothing in that game. We respected him too much. We cannot come out doing the same thing against Tom Brady, man. I'm going to leave that at that. You know what I'm saying? Um, a couple other things happened in the NFL today that's very, very interesting. You know what I'm saying? Carson Wentz was in a situation to win and get in against one of the worst teams, a two-win team, I believe, the Jacksonville Jaguars, and the NFL, and he didn't do it. He didn't do it. So as far as right now, all what we still know about Carson Wentz in the postseason is that um, he got a couple snaps in the postseason. That's it. He hasn't won a playoff game, hasn't played a full playoff game. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's looking more and more. If you want to be a hunter, it's looking more and more like Howie Roseman is just Howie Roseman is better than what a lot of people think. You know what I mean? He, I, I, I think he's, I think he's more of a visionary than I thought he was. So I'm gonna go on the record and say this about Howie Roseman moving forward. It's not many moves I'm going to question from Howie Roseman moving forward until I see them look bad. I do that generally. I gave Jalen Rager a chance. Everybody know you should have went with Justin Jefferson, but I was like, man, let's see what he got at least. Now it was looking like it was a bad decision. But Howie Roseman is right way more than he's wrong. Nobody's right 100%. So I'm not holding anything over the past on Howie Roseman based upon Howie Roseman knowing when to cut bait with Carson Wentz and ride out with Jalen Hurts. Look at what just happened. They had a way better team. The circumstances were the same. You know what I'm saying? Both teams started off 2-5. and five. Only one one of them teams made the postseason. If the Jacksonville Jaguars was our last plate we had to finish to get in the playoffs, I would bet my bottom dollar the Eagles would beat the Jaguars. I mean, come on, man. We got to call a spade a spade here. Howie Roseman was right. Howie Roseman was right and Nick Sirianni was right. They both came out and, you know, made statements on Jalen Hurts. Not statements like, you know, like words, but... They backed their actions up, and the actions seem to be having them look like a genius, in my opinion. Garner Minshew, after beating the Jets, reportedly runs to Nick Sirianni and says, what do I have to do to become the starting quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles? Relax, you just beat the Jets. Jalen Hurts just twisted his ankle. And now you having meetings with the coach running behind him, trying to see how you can now take over the ship? How about this, man? How about you become a dual threat? Because 189 or 190 passing yards, a touchdown, or what, what, one pick? That's what, you know, Jalen Hurts could do that. You know what I mean? But what he also can do is get you 70 yards on the ground in that game and two rushing touchdowns. Give the defense something else to focus on. You can't do that. You know what I mean? So I thought that that was crazy to have a meeting like that to try to, like, you know, talk about it. You're supposed to let your play. You, 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 if you, you know what you got to do. Just go out there and be better. 
be better than Jalen Hurts. That's what you got to do. Not run into the coach, man. And it near, see, Randy set that, shut that down. He said, "Listen, man, we, we, uh, you know what I mean? We good right now at quarterback, pretty much. We good at quarterback, pretty much. If Jalen Hurts didn't go out there and show the little bit that he showed in those four games, we would have not even been comfortable getting rid of Carson Wentz." We would have not been comfortable doing it. If Jalen Hurts would have came out there and looked like Zach Wilson, how he looked in his first four starts, or Trevor Lawrence in his first four starts, you know what I'm saying? Or Mac Jones in his first four starts, we would have not had stuck around. Listen, the season that Jalen Hurts is having, if he was a number one overall pick, they'd be bloviating the bottom. Howie Roseman had tremendous insight to go ahead and play and, 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 and you know, make this swap at quarterback. Because right now, the Philadelphia Eagles have two first-round picks, from one from the Colts and one from uh, Miami, that's going to be in between 15 and 18. You're going to be picking before the 20th selection two times in the first round. Then you still got your own pick. That's crazy, yo. That's crazy, man. Howie Roseman has done a tremendous job in saving money. You know what I'm saying? The most money that we spent today was on a quarterback that didn't go to the playoffs. He ain't going nowhere. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and it's, it is what it is. It is what it is. It's more things. that This is what I learned about the quarterback position more and more. Now, I'm really a guy that can really, you know, judge if a wide receiver is going to be good coming out of college. Because I know what to look for out of a pass catcher. You know what I mean? I was a tight end. I know what to look for, uh, you know, out of a pass catcher. But... Quarterbacks, I'm starting to learn a little more. Now, we know about the physical attributes. We know about the, the arm angles and all of those good things that a lot of these talented quarterbacks can throw with. They said this about Trevor Lawrence, that he was a generational talent. Trevor Lawrence looks more raw than anything. For real, for real. Even though he cooked the coats today, he's been looking raw all year. They said Zach Wilson reminded them of Aaron Jones. Where? Where? Where do you see the resemblance in that? Where? They said Mac Jones. Mac Jones was one of the worst quarterbacks in his draft class. Turns out he's the best. And they said Carson. And they said Jalen Hurts wasn't a top forty quarterback. Come on, all that stuff is wrong. All of it is wrong. And the common denominator between Mac Jones and Jalen Hurts being so good, and the other guys that I just named not being as good right away, is that they have. Other things that they can hang their hat on besides just arm talent. You got to have heart, man. You got to have heart. You got to be able to want it, man. And Jalen Hurts just wants it more than a lot of other people, which just causes him to make the better play, which is why even if we still had Carson Wentz on the roster, even if it was an option right now to have Carson Wentz, I would still rather go into battle with a dude like Jalen Hurts. Carson Wentz gives up at 2-5. and five. He ran out of steam. <laughs> That's too far of a hole to dig yourself out of if you Carson Wentz. It's not that not that big of a hole if you Jalen Hurts. Because he made the postseason starting off at 2-5, and five, having to win a lot of division games, which are always tough down the stretch. It's the bottom line, man. The bottom line. People want to continuously tell us that we haven't beaten the winning team. Well, what about all the teams we beat when we had a losing record? What about all the teams that lost to us, like Denver? By the way, Denver was 500 when we beat them. Carolina. Carolina had a winning record when we beat them. The Saints. The Saints were also a 500 team when we beat them. What about all the teams we beat while we had a losing record? That don't account for nothing. Because we here. And the bottom line is we're going to be in Tampa this weekend trying to go to the next round. Everybody's 0-0 right now in the NFC. It is what it is. Either your season got ended today or the, like, a week ago or a week or two ago, or you 0-0 right now looking to finish a plate. And that's where the Philadelphia Eagles at. So I want to say this to the Eagles fans who didn't give up. We're going to need you this weekend. Because although this ain't no walk in the park, it's the postseason now. Everybody's good now. But I feel like we got the upper hand going in Tampa, and I feel like we will advance. Let me know what you think in the comments, man.